Good morning, stamping friends. Oh, I can't tell you how good it feels to be back in my stamping studio, stamping away and coming up with more projects. As you know, I've been a traveling machine here and I love to travel. That's why I worked for the airlines for 20 years. However, with the airlines and the whole airport situation, it's just been a crazy time trying to fly standby on my benefits. So I'm actually sometimes buying full fare like everybody else. So now I know how you guys all live. It's a little benefit that I got when I retired that I didn't know how blessed I was to have it because now I'm having to buy full fare. But anyway, all is good. Oh, one other thing that happened on my last trip, um, I got my purse stolen in the airport. So that just added to my adventure. I seriously felt like Tom Hanks in that one movie where he was stuck in the airport. Did you guys see that? I think it was called The Terminal. But anyway, um, I thought I was going to have to live happily ever after in the Minneapolis airport, but I did get out. So here I am. And I have a really fun project for you today. This is unlike any project I've ever done. So I'm anxious to share it with you. So let me switch my camera around and we will get started with today's project. Thank you for joining me. And I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Lori Heiling and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Today's project, I'm going to show it to you in our annual catalog. It's a little secret here. It's just a small little box. If you want to see what it looks like on the main page of the catalog, it's on page 27. And they only have one example right here in crumb cake. Isn't that cute for a springy one? But it is a great way to give a gift card just to dress it up a little bit. So this is the die set. And then let me show you the actual die. Um, I have them right here. And I'm just missing the main die over here. All right, so this is what it looks like. Well, let me move that so you can see everything. This is actually the little pocket card. And look at all the extra little embellishments you can get. This is kind of like the bottom of a ribbon. There's an oval here, which we don't have a lot of oval shapes, a smaller rectangle. This is a scalloped edge, cute little tag, leaves. Um, this can make a bow. This would be the little tassels that hang off the bow. And then this is if you want to put like a little ring on the top, if you wanted to run string or ribbon through and tie it to a gift or something. And this one, I'm not really sure what that's for. I think it just makes another little dot or maybe it goes on top of that. I haven't played with that one yet, but I just wanted to show that. And then also, I know I've said this in a previous video, but I always make a copy of what this looks like before I take it apart, because then you can see every little piece that is in this set. In case you're missing one, you can just go back to this diagram. And then when I put it in the plastic, I just put it behind like that. All right, so let me move all this. I want to share with you where my inspiration came from. Check out my nails. I um, have this awesome uh, nail gal. Her name is Lisa Schley here in Arizona. She is so good at painting. <laughs> she does it all freehand. So anyway, I had a different project in mind, but check out these two fingers. This was my inspiration. I know it's a little bit gothic for summer, but how cute is black, white, and yellow with daisies? So that is the inspiration for my card. <laughs> all right, now let me grab the paper that I used. This is actually in the mini catalog. It's black and white designs. They kind of promote this as our Halloween paper this year. However, as we all know, black and white goes with anything. Any color matches black and white. So I know that if you get this um, paper pack, you are going to use it even beyond Halloween because really you can use this anytime. And um, of course, I'm going to pick out the polka dot paper to use on my project. And what I did first was I just cut a six by six sheet and I know it's a little bit oversized. Let me show you why. I could have made it smaller and cut off quite a bit off the top and a little bit more there. But let me tell you why I cut it oversized. Now, remember, this is going to be the back and this is the front. However, I did not like how the dots line up. It's too perfect. Do you see how they're like lined up almost like dominoes and that just kind of bugged me. So what I did was I tilted it. Now watch how it goes more random. Doesn't it look more of a random print rather than like this lined up? Okay, that's how OCD I am. Sorry, that's just how I was made. So when I die cut, it's gonna look like this. And before I got on here, I did die cut one so you can see what I mean. So let me set that aside. And do you see how it looks just more random dots? Now the other thing I'm gonna change on this is do you see how when I fold this over, this is going to be the back side? However, the back side, I'm only going to see one and a half polka dots, and I just thought it looked a little awkward. And so um, I want to change the top of it. And what I want to do is just level that off so it's all the same. And I'm going to cut it, but I'm just... let me share with you how I'm going to cut this. So normally I would just go like this with that straight edge and go like this. But guess what? When you go like this, 
it's going to be too wide this way and actually too wide this way. So I can't do it that way. I actually need to fold it on the score line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it through my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. And I'm going to just put this right on the edge. And also I'm guaranteed that both sides will line up together so they're the same. Do you see that edge already cut? I'm not even going to try to line it up there because it might be a little bit taller. I'm actually going to put it on top like that so I'm actually cutting both layers and then this side makes a nice little straight edge so that um, you know it's going straight across so that's how I'm going to die cut it and I will be right back hold tight okay let me show you again how I did that I placed this on like this and I even cut off a teeny tiny bit up here see this is how it used to be and um, I just went down about gosh one eighth of an inch if even that. So that's how I got this shape. Now what I'm gonna do is grab my silicone mat. I like using this whenever I'm gluing on this nice surface so I don't get glue on here. And I'm gonna grab my bone folder and let's just fold on these score lines. These are teeny tiny. So if you're using our seal plus or a regular seal, it's gonna be a little bit too wide. We don't want this adhered shut because we do want a gift card to fall in here but guess what I want the polka dot side so I meant to fold it this way either way is going to work but for this project you will soon see because I have a surprise for you at the end all right now all we have to do is fold this like this and that is what is going to hold our gift card so like I said liquid glue multi-purpose liquid glue is going to be our best tape here you could use tear tape that's this skinny I've got a little bit of a dry blob at the tip of it and sometimes it still won't come out. So you need your magic little needle that you can see I have within arm's reach and just stick it in there and that will unclog the pore. All right. And don't use very much, otherwise it's gonna squirt out and your gift card will be stuck inside. So let's just fold that. And we're, we have that perfect little um, edging on the top and you see how they're uniform too they're cut out at the same um, the same scallop okay so basically it's just like a little rectangle but this the nice part is it is a pouch so a gift card will fit in there all right the next step we're gonna take is we are gonna grab our Baker's twine now the way Stampin' Up! sells our Baker's twine now is you get a bundle of them you get vanilla white kind of a gray granite crumb cake and black look what I've used the most of black I'm going to need to reorder some, but um, this is just really nice because you get so many colors, and it's called Baker's Twine Essentials Pack. Now, what I did beforehand was I cut off, these are two three-inch pieces. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this, and I had to put a little bit of thought in this because I didn't know how to get these attached without it being glued shut. So this is what I came up with. We are going to grab four teeny tiny one-fourth inch punches that are circles you I'm sure all of you have a hole punch this is like the old-fashioned second grade uh, three ring binder hole punch and um, what we're going to do is we are going to take our mini glue dot also take your take your pick tool and what I want you to do is grab we're going to use four mini glue dots and we're just going to place them right on here and then we're going to put one of the ends of the ribbon on here see if I can take this off without it sticking to my finger. Whoopsie. Now it's coming unraveled. Let me use this end. Maybe I'll just use my finger <laughs> there like that. And then we are going to stick it on the underside here. And the reason we have to have that little piece there is if you just do a glue dot, it's going to stick shut. So that um, the little hole punch thing is going to prevent it from sticking shut because the glue dot will be completely covered up. So and then let's do the same thing to this side. Just stick it on there. And I guess just with your finger, it works the best. And then just stick this on the other side. And what we're creating here is we're making a cute little gift bag. Try to do it um, as even as you can. There we go. It looks like a little shopping bag. Now we need to do the same thing on the other side. So we'd grab two more glue dots. It helps to have a pointed edge because then you don't really have to use your fingers on this. And then, like I said, just press down and it will come off your finger. Now let's go on the other side and it's easy to line up because you already have one down there. Whoops, need it on the back side. Okay, like that. Whoops. And pinch it so it sticks. And then last one.
there we have it. Our little shopping bag and see how you can still get the gift card in and you can, um, you know, nothing sticks. Whoops, this one just came off. I need to pinch them together hard. Whoops. All right, let me move that over a little bit. Okay, there we go. Perfect. All right, let's set that aside. Now, if we follow my nails, you can see that we need some daisies on there. So let's take our medium daisy punch and I'm just going to use Daffodil Delight. I'm just matching my nail color. And we'll just do two of those. Then what I want to do is I want to ink up the edges just a little bit, just to give it a little of, bit of character. So um, again, you can use your, your little silicone mat and that will prevent you from getting color on your mat. I bet it's hard to see this, but it is a little bit darker and shaded. You could also go like this if you want, but these little petals are so tiny and kind of flimsy, but it works like this as well. Okay. All right. Now what we're going to do is, and this is just a sponge dauber. That's kind of like a thimble that fits on your finger. Now let's just put these two together. And of course, we're going to offset them a little bit like that. There we go. And if you would like to, if you want a little more dimension on this, just take your bone folder and just kind of curl out the edges a little bit. And that'll just make, make it a little bit more um, 3D-ish, you know? All right. Now we need to work on the center of that. All right, I know that daisies are not always yellow and black, but <laughs> humor me, we are going to make this um, coordinate with my nails and with the bag. So we're gonna put one in the center Oh, I, yeah, I think we'll have enough room. And then we are going to go around the edges with the tinier ones. You know what? Maybe we can get by with three. Let's do three. So let's remove this one. Sometimes I create as I go, and this is one of those times. I think we're going to do just three. I think one big one with all these little ones is going to be too many dots, and I think three is going to do kind of the same thing like that. Okay, now we have it totally coordinating. There we go, I like that. All right, now these are the matte black dots, by the way. You get quite a few in a pack, those are valuable. All right, let's bring our gift bag out. Now, I wanna put this in the bottom left corner. Let me grab my dimensionals. I think one large one on the back is gonna work for this. And let's get that secured. Like that, and then we just need our little sentiment. So figure out what you wanna give this gift for. Oops, it helps if you take the back off. <laughs> oh, like that. And it's okay if it hangs over the edge. All right, now let's pick out our sentiment. Let me move this first because I already chose which sentiment set I want. It's called Charming Sentiments. This one is so great because it covers so many different holidays or reasons that you would send a card. And for this purpose, I'm looking for the one that will actually fit on this tiny gift card. And I think, hey there, is the one that's gonna work for this because, you know, these are just way too big for where I wanna put it. All right, so let me grab that. I have it out, it's well-worn. You can see I like this stamp, but it's okay if it um, stains. That's just what photopolymer sometimes does. And I think it'll fit on the small block. And what I'm gonna do is grab just a piece of scrap basic black paper. And we are gonna use my Versamark, which is clear, kind of goopier ink. Get that inked up. And then let me grab my embossing powder, which is basic white, and also my embossing buddy. Now you guys, this little kit, let me show you everything in this. You get this tray, which will hold our embossing powder once we sprinkle. And you also get the embossing buddy, which what you do is you just rub it on there. It's okay if it looks chalky or whatever, because it'll come off, but it's basically just getting rid of the fingerprints that I just put back on here. <laughs> I was trying to wipe it off so it wasn't so white, but I guess I shouldn't touch it after I've done that. And then let me ink this up again. And it's just really a valuable tool because um, we don't have anything like this. We had one years ago, but they brought it back by popular demand. And then the other thing you get in this kit is this tweezer, which is worth the kit alone. This is the strongest tweezer I've ever seen. If you pinch your finger, I mean, it grips it really well. And it really helps when you're tying bows. You can stick it on that 
you know, when you tie it once, then you stick it under there and then you have two free hands to make the bow. It just is really slick. All right, so what we're gonna do is um, you can pour it in here and let the let this little tray catch everything and knock it off. And I can get rid of that little kind of powdery, whoops, I knocked a little bit off the exclamation point like that. And then what's nice about this is there's a little screw on cap, which they got smart because I, it used to be a little plug you put in there and I lost mine. So, you know, I could have embossing powder coming out that end, but I won't lose this one because it actually screws on. And then that way, when you're done with it, it will just nicely flow into the original packaging. All right. So I'm going to um, head over to my heat tool and I'm going to emboss this. And then I'm also, while I'm at it, I'm going to die cut. And these all have a matching die set that cuts really tight. And here's a little diagram of what the, um, the dies look like. So I will be right back after I do that. Look at how cute that is. It really is a tight fit, but that is such a trend now to trim along really close to the edge of the words. And um, there you can see it better without that. So that's exactly what I wanted. All right, now let's grab our little gift bag. And what we're gonna do is use our take your pick tool. And this makes it easier to pick up these teeny tiny dimensionals. And this one, look at how tiny that part is. I'm gonna take one that I already cut a half one and just put that one down there. We'll need two of them so they don't go um, flying all over and we want them to stay symmetrical and lined up. If you have one in the middle, sometimes it tends to kind of go up or down, but when you have two, it'll keep it more secure. And then we're just going to tuck this in the side. We don't want it covered up too much because we still want to be able to read it, but I think down here is best. And make sure your dimensional doesn't run over there. Hey there, isn't that cute? So that really can go for anything. Now, you could actually give this just like this and stick it in a card, but let's turn this into a card. We'll just do a little bit more to this, all right? So I'm gonna set that aside now. Oh, by the way, I have to show the coordination, see? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, let's take basic black. That might be a good color that we can match with. And I cut it to eight and a half by five and a half, scored in half on the long side, and then just fold in half and make sure you have your bone folder handy. Make that nice and crisp. Now we're gonna take, this is Daffodil Delight cut at five and a quarter by four inches. And this is gonna be our backdrop. However, I think this is just a little boring. So we're gonna add a little bit of interest to the back of this. I'm going to emboss this. The embossing folder I chose to use is called 3D Brick and Mortar. It's just kind of a subtle look and not too crazy. And another one that might be cute is our painted textures. And this one, I'm not gonna pop up. Sometimes I tend to pop up this layer, but I don't want this to get too thick with all the other things we have going. And we'll just adhere it like this. It's gonna be very basic. And then the focal point will be that little gift bag that we just made, like this. And I haven't shown you the surprise yet, so hang tight. It's at the very, very end. I'm looking for my dimensionals now. Here they are. And we are gonna, you know what? We might not have to pop this up. Actually, I'm going to. I just can't make a card without popping things up. So go ahead and pop that layer up if you want. We'll just have to add another $2 postage. Just kidding. <laughs> this would be one that I probably would maybe hand to someone, but you could easily mail it. All right, we're almost done, but the best part is the very end which I'm almost there. All right, we're getting closer. Of course, you're gonna wanna put a five and a quarter by four inch white cardstock in the middle. And let's just tilt this. So here we have our coordinating outfit, but wait till you see the ending. Okay, the part you've all been waiting for, look at this gift card I found. Ta-da! Matchy, matchy. <laughs> Oh my gosh, is this overkill on black, white, and yellow or what? But look at how cute that is. And I promise I had my nails done first and then I was in line at Hobby Lobby and I saw this and I didn't even need a gift card, but I just bought it for the gift card. By the way, $10 is the least amount that you can put on a Hobby Lobby gift card and just enough that it sticks out a little bit to bring it all together. So that's my project today. I have put my nails in there with it too though. Isn't that just like the package deal? <laughs> All right, I thought that was kind of fun, and I got a little glue on my on my background, but there's our project today. You can bet when I take my picture, I'm going to have my nails in there, so maybe I'll go like, well, I can't hold it. How am I going to hold it? I don't know. I'll figure that out, but that's our project today. I hope you enjoyed it. 
One more thing I want to mention, this code up here will get you some free projects. If you order from my Stampin' Up! website, which I will put the link in the comments, and use the host code, and if your order is over $35, you will receive three free projects in the mail from me to you as my way of saying thank you. You will also get the PDF instructions so that you can assemble them. And um, the deadline for that is August, well, it's actually the 10th of every month because I have to have a cutout date of when I actually start cutting the projects and getting them in the mail. So the 10th of every month is the cutoff. If you order this, today is the 9th. If you order by the 10th, you will get in on the August Creative You projects. If you order after the 10th, it will roll over into September. So it doesn't matter when you order, you'll still get three free projects, but um, it's just which month do you want. Now, this is not one of the projects in the Creative You. I never show those because sometimes I'm still designing the night before my live class, but um, that's just how it works. So I know sometimes people are confused, but the little, um, Things that you have to remember is it has to be on my Stampin' Up! website, it has to have the host code, and it has to be over $35. Now, if you do choose to go over that and maybe you want host rewards and it's $150 or more, omit the host code. You just um, keep the host rewards yourself. And remember, the sign-up deal, I just always like to throw this out. If you want to be a discount shopper, all you have to do is choose $125 worth of products and you will only pay $99 for it. Plus, you get free shipping and you also get a really cool planner. Um, I don't have it right by me. I should have, um, I should have put it in with my video here, but I can show you on the website. Otherwise, it's on the last page of the celebration brochure which i have right here let me grab that for you so this is our celebration special you get this cool planner for free they just throw that in so it's another good reason to join now all right i promise this is the ending thank you again so much for joining me i do my youtube lives every tuesday morning at 9 a.m arizona time take care guys have a great rest of your week bye bye